we're in that desert oasis of neon and glitter, Las Vegas, Nevada, where 80 men and women have gathered in the pavilion of Caesar's Palace to vie for that most coveted title of all in sport, world champion. This is Pocket Billiards at its best, the Brunswick World Open Nine Ball Championship. Hello, everybody. I'm Barry Tompkins, and welcome to Caesar's Palace here in Las Vegas, Nevada. The race for the World Championship in nine ball continues today with a men's quarterfinal match, and this one really promises to be a most exciting match. Mike Siegel, everybody's champion, over 70 titles, playing David Howard, who comes in here as one of the hottest players on the tour. And joining us, as always, for expert commentary, a four-time United States Open champion, three-time world champion, Steve Mizrak. And, Steve, this one really today seems to be very, very even. Tough match. Uh, David just won two tournaments back-to-back. -back, but Mike is a great player. He's a magician out there. When he's hot, nobody can beat him. Once again, and we've talked about this throughout the series, there is that added intangible, and that is the television lights. One table in the middle of a room, everybody's eyes on you. David has not played under the television lights. Mike has. I give the edge for the television lights to Mike. So David Howard is a guy who really has to keep his mind on business, and we had a chance to talk to him about that. If he can do it, he feels he can win. Well, if, uh, your concentration is uh, probably 90% of the game because uh, we all lock in on shots. We know how to make the shots. It's just letting your mind wander in and out that causes you to, to maybe lose a game when everything's laying perfect for you. It's, uh, your mind is a real tricky, delicate machine. It can sway with just the lightest breeze, so you really got to be on top of everything that's going on every second. You can't be watching another table or checking the scores. You need to watch your own game. Well, I have to think that might not be too difficult to do when you're standing at the table shooting, but keeping your mind on your own game and you're just sitting there waiting, I have to think, is much more difficult. Mike may have something to say about uh, what happens here. You know, if, if Mike doesn't let David at the table, David can't win. Let's take a look at Steve Mizrak's scorecard then and see how he sizes the matchup. And let's go from top to bottom again. First of all, let's talk about the break. Probably David Howard's strongest point. Hey, David hits him hard. Uh, he's, his cue ball is wild, but when he starts making balls on the break, I give the edge to David. So cue ball control could be a very important factor. Um, I'll give the cue ball control to Mike, give the experience to Mike, and the pressure situation to Mike. He's been competing in a lot of finals, and I like Mike in those three categories. The last category, strategy, they're both nine ball players. They both know what they're doing in, in pressure situations and in different strategies. Uh, let's call it even. Bottom line of this one, 70-time champion against the guy who's won two in rapid succession. We'll be back. Back at Caesars Palace here in Las Vegas, this is the Brunswick World Open Nine Ball Championship. Men's quarterfinals. This promises to be an outstanding match. David Howard, he has been in a major league role, plays Mike Siegel, everybody's all world this is the quarterfinals let's take a look at the rules and the rules are fairly simple the object of the game well the name of the game is nine ball isn't it players will shoot the balls in numerical order beginning with ball number one the player will shoot until he misses and the game of course is over when the nine ball is pocketed whenever the nine ball is pocketed the player will lose his turn when any foul is committed and of course the first player to win nine games wins the match Who's so we're set to go and we'll lag for break. Oh, Mike Siegel team. facing you right now. And David Howard. If Mike is on tonight, uh, you'll see a magician at work. Roll, baby. He didn't hit that lag ball too well. Roll faster. Well, David Howard wins luck. the lag. Thank you. Good luck. You will see a powerful break right here. He's Me small. Luck. But he hits those balls a ton. Here's the prize money. $15,000 to the winner. More than double that of the runner-up. And on down to $1,000 for the ninth through 16th places. $50,000 tournament money. What can you buy for $15,000, uh, Barry? Can you think well, of a few things? Well, here you could eat in the palace court. Yeah, thanks a lot. Watch, uh, watch when he hits these balls. The cue ball will jump almost straight in the air if he hits them hard. He's been playing extremely well lately. Won his last two tournaments, won the Southern California Invitational and the Los Angeles Open. He also won a tournament in Cincinnati earlier this year. Got the best break on the tour. And right here on this table, uh, the best breaker has got, has got the advantage. Well, take a look at this now. He's got the one. He's got to cut the one in this corner right here. But 
then he's got to play position for the two. Might have made the two. Did he make the two, Barry? Looks like he did. I don't see it on the table. Looks like he did make the two. Okay, so the three is right out in the middle, so it's clear. Mike is the favorite here. But in this match, anything can happen. Well, I didn't like the first shot that David made already. He cut the one in, the two looks like it's over by the rail next to the seven. And what he has to do is hit the two, graze off the two, and maybe make the seven in his pocket. He tried to make it, failed. So now it's Mike Siegel, Captain Hook, they call him. Didn't leave him a shot. Towson, Maryland is Mike Siegel's home, not far from Baltimore. Now, this is going to set the tone of Mike's game right here. He can play safe, or he can bank the two. If he plays safe, he's going to he's going to play this game very cautiously. If he goes for the two, he's going to play wide open. He tried to bank it. Oh, looks like he got away with it. Stupid. And you heard Mike Siegel talk that. to himself. I thought I could have shortened that with follow. You know? I could have played safe, but I could have shortened that too with follow. Just didn't make it. Mike never stops talking. No, very verbal. <laughs> David didn't get a correct position on the first shot. What do you think he's gonna do here, Barry? You're asking me? You're the expert. Well, uh, once in a while, uh, you know, we, we want you to contribute here. <laughs> That's what I thought right there. Okay, great, great, great prediction. <laughs> boy, oh boy. You know, he almost missed the seven. Look, look how down below. Okay, he made the hit on the seven off the rail. He got an angle here. Mike Siegel sits, waits. Looks like he's straight in. Might have to force it over. Hit it hard. Well, not a, a percentage shot right here. When you're playing Mike Siegel, you want to be 100% sure you're going to make the ball. Go south. Now he's going to do one of two things. He's either going to cut it in right here, or he's going to bank it off the rail and back over here. Ooh, tried to bank it, didn't get it. And again, the thing that I think is probably most fascinating about the nine ball format, the simple fact that the only ball that really counts now is the nine ball. Pumping. These two guys are two of the best offensive players we have. Mike, as you say, is everybody's all American. In a pressure sit situation, uh, I like Mike uh, playing anybody. When he gets to the finals, he's tough. He's won 14 out of the last 15 times he's been in a final. And he gets rolls like that. If he doesn't hit the side rail, he might be down by the chalks, and uh, Mike might not have a shot. So there's the first game, and Mike Siegel has gone up one game to none over David Howard. For lucky. And he got lucky. He put it down. We'll be back right after this. Well, Mike Siegel inflicts the first bit of damage in this match. He leads 1-0 over David Howard. He'll break now. Another powerful breaker. Watch what happens to his cue stick this time. When he hits the, hits the white ball, the cue stick goes through the white ball and bends on the table. Made the nine and scratched. Also made the cue ball. 
That's tough. Well, good news, bad news. I mean, good news is he makes the nine. nine. Bad news is the cue ball goes Watch in. the bend on the cue here. He's one of the few players that does this. Look at there. He bends it almost to the breaking point. It's the most common game I ever played when it ain't going your way. You know? Now, once the nine, kiss off of two balls. No, the nine. The nine. I mean, but he scratched. So David Howard, nicknamed the Giant Killer, and for obvious reasons. David has to get out of here. He can't let Mike have a big lead in this match. He's got a tough shot here. He's got to draw the cue ball back to play position on the four. I think he overhit it. Oh, well, he just got he got absolutely perfect. He didn't want to he, he didn't want to go too far and get himself safe. When either one of these uh, guys get to the table, Barry, I predict the game is over if they get a clear shot. David Howard to me looks like a pool player. When you draw a picture of a pool player, you draw a picture of David Howard. You're looking at the hottest player right now. Won the last two tournaments. Very happy about that. Built up a lot of his confidence. When David used to get into the finals of a match, or of a tournament, he, he was a little suspect. The, the pressure element used to, used to bother him uh, until he started winning a few matches and a few tournaments, and now he's sort of come into his own, he, and the pressure doesn't bother him too much right now. But I don't know how the cameras are gonna affect him. Mike has uh, played in front of the cameras many times. Last time these two played, David was the winner in a very close match in Toledo. And we're tied at one. As David Howard runs the rack, Siegel has won 12 of the 18 matches that they've played. You know why, so this. But I'll bet you that Siegel Smice, won but most uh, of the early matches. Ice won't come out of there. Until David started winning a little bit more on the tour. Mm. He's the best breaker right now. Well, and in fact, the word on him is as his break goes, so he goes. Yes. That's right. Scratch. Well. Yeah, nothing spots, right? No. Well, that's bad news as... God, all of them stay down. Three balls will this stay right, down. Thank you. You've got to guard against that. You can't let that cue ball run wild. Once Mike starts breaking uh, to his standard, he controls the cue ball rather well. David always lets the cue ball this. run. Look at this shot. It's not possible, is it? Boy, he lets the cue ball get away from him. Call your next pocket. Mike didn't want to hit that ball. He wanted to play the, that ball in the same spot he just shot the two in. It's going to be two to one, Siegel. Siegel ranked number two in the world. Who's number one? Strickland? Barry? I think so, yes. If Strickland and Siegel play, you will see some match. Two games to one. As Never Mike a doubt. Siegel 
playing Martin, the crowd down, here and down. getting the crowd really on his side. And that's a factor. Well, the, We've well, seen the, the crowd well, like turn on some five players five during the run of this tournament. Mike is the best pure player that we have Never out there today. Well, if confidence wins, he I wins, play a tournament. He's he wins win. automatically. <laughs> but he's got the ability to back it up. Yeah, Muhammad Ali, uh, Sugar Ray, uh, I told you, I was too lazy to walk they were confident, the but they had the ability to, to back it up. Yeah. You know and what I mean? so does he. That's, that's, <coughs> I like that vest that he's wearing. That's that. That's all. It's too like lazy to come over Bat here. Masterson. Like, yeah. <laughs> that's all. That's all. He doesn't play gin as good as Bat Masterson <laughs> did. Cue ball control here. Watch it. Once he gets it parked right out in the middle. What? Uh-uh. There, there it goes. Is. Nine ball down this time, and it didn't scratch. Nope. Four in a row, four in a row. Let's take shot. another look at it. We're going to be able to see the nine ball go in the hole. There it is. Shot in like a rocket ship. All those balls cleared the way. Just perfect. And so Mike Siegel has gone on top. 3-1. We'll be back to Caesars right after this. Well, the man at the table has the lead. Mike Siegel now 3-1 over David Howard. He'll have another break here. He knocked the nine ball in on the last break. In fact, he's knocked it in twice, but he scratched on one of them. The break with these two fellas, big advantage. So he'll try to do more of same. Notice where the white ball is. He didn't make a ball. But what five ball? White... <laughs> Mike has got it rolling again. Too smart. What happened this time? Pretty good too. <clears throat> Breaking pretty good. Is Mike didn't make a ball, and what what David has to do is hit the one, but now he's got to go off the rail and back in to try to hit the one. This one you have it rolling for you. This is a push out now. Why don't you okay. explain that for us? Push out is when when they shoot away from the ball, don't hit the ball right after the break is the only time you can do that. It's like a free move, yeah, uh, with no here. penalty. Uh, Mike can either shoot or what do you think? Or let David shoot. <laughs> he just asked the audience. I'm going for it. In fact, it was Jim Bakula, who's the director he's going of operations for, the nine. for what he's doing, who he asked. What he's doing here, he's going to try to bank the one. He's going to try to bank the one into the nine and try to make the nine. And get this over with in a hurry. So a little of the game there. Did he do it? Yes. 4-1. How do you like that? <laughs> Take another look at this. Mr. Magic. When he gets it going, he's tough. He gets the rolls. He makes shots like this. It's un just uncanny, some, some, of, some of the things he does. Well, that's a great shot for 4-1. <laughs> Winks up here to us. Not bad for guys who've been playing six months, huh? He likes to talk, too. Next thing you know, he'll have his own cue. If the score was 4-1 to one, uh, the other way, uh, I don't know if he'd be talking so much. Mike breaking again. Now he's knocked the nine ball in twice. One of them is a scratch. The other one is dead in. Watch the cue ball. Cue ball, when Mike breaks, always winds up Jesus. sort of in the middle of the table. But once again, he nothing hits, fell. Well, he hits maybe one. God, I'm in. One, I like I'm in one good. tip above know, center. Just, uh, I had those pretty good, didn't I? And the cue know. ball, again, winds up right here. Didn't get kissed by anything, but he didn't make a ball. Now it's David's turn. Uh, David really get it hot here. Trailing 4-1. Just got by. He pulled it over, it looked like. <coughs> I don't think he's looking at the nine. I just think he's looking to pocket the three. And he did. 
did. Hit the ball, boy. Didn't hit it uh, hard enough. Uh, <laughs> what he wanted to do is have that cue ball come out about here. Now he's got a tough shot. He's going to make it all the way down here. He was talking to himself. You he heard him say, hit the ball. <sighs> Not only is the shot tough, the position is tough. Good shot, good shot. He got away with one there. Looks like he's gonna have to shoot the six in the side pocket. Oh, oh that's twice there? now, right? Forgot to make the five. Yeah, he didn't let me hit it a while ago. Larry, I think you made a big mistake here. Ball's getting a little bit funny. I don't know why he did that. All you have to do is hit the, I just like take hit the five in the side. Thirty more seconds to look. Tough game. Well, David got away with one. I tell you what, these two guys—they don't need us here. They do their own commentary. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Mike's got to watch out here. He doesn't hit behind the ball and scratch. Well, you called that one. <laughs> I've been around a little bit. I right? know that. I know that. Huh? David's got a chance to come back a little bit. Four, four, two. Six in the side, seven in the corner, eight in the corner, and nine in the same pocket. Well, there's one quarter. the seven. And now the eight. Steve told you about it. You didn't even really have to watch it, did you? <laughs> Close up. And so we're going to go to 4-2 as David Howard knocks it in the hole and that cuts the lead of mike siegel down to two games it's 4-2 and we'll be back to caesar's palace right after this don't go away 4-2 mike siegel's lead narrowing a little bit as david howard had a relatively easy game he is still at the table he's got two games mike but but the break is a very big factor in this uh, with these two guys so far mike siegel's had better of the breaks With the way David breaks and with the way Mike breaks, uh, you know, games can be run out yeah, here very easy easily. one time, huh? And they knock the one no ball in on the break. No way to get easy, right? So he was shooting at the two. David's got a little problem here, trying to get position on the three. get around that five. Uh, he got away with it, he there. did. But this is no easy shot. Anytime you go to the whole length of the table, it's no easy shot. Beautiful view from our end camera there. Nice shot. Not he was getting loose. That was serious. to draw the cue ball back a little bit but he's got to make sure he comes back uh, with the right angle on the six because he does not want to go around the table yeah. perfect starting to get into a pretty good rhythm it seems yep. here steve yep Looking as though he's going to narrow the gap to just one now. Right, I said the break is very important. These guys, they, they have two very powerful breaks. This one to make it 4-3, and he does. So David Howard has run off a couple games in a row here after being down by three games. 
He closes to 4-3 down to Mike Siegel. David could get hot here and uh, win three or four games very quick. How did this happen? Well, he asked the question. Do you Some have the measure. answer? <laughs> you know, no funny things happen break. in this game. Mike is straight in. He's got to play position for the two on the side rail. <sighs> Looks like what he's going to do is come down here off the rail, try to nip the one, make the one in this pocket, and come all the way over here for the two. Here's a two right here. Perfect shot. Absolutely perfect. That's my single for you. Mike doesn't do too many things wrong on the pool table. You better pay, play perfect if you want to win. saw him do that and that's a rare mistake rare huh it's about as rare as a three dollar bill right there Mary. <laughs> can't believe that ball skid on me give david some momentum here boy, oh boy he wanted to get a little higher there because the four is down along this rail where the three is and he doesn't want too much of an angle that's real nice. I can't believe now I didn't get past the first ball. He made ball. a bad shot where he tied up these two <laughs> balls right here. Jeez. He can't make either one of these balls. Can't believe I did that. That's what he's talking Couldn't about. get out now. from there. He can't believe that he tied those two balls up. No, well, he'll get out. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Got a tough shot right here. Ah, <sighs> makes me. Well, he's got to, he's got to take a chance right here. He's gonna try to come over two rails, try to open those balls up, or play safe off the six after he hits the five. Not hard enough. It's virtually. Now what? Now it's he's got to try to play now safe. What? You got a bridge. I think what he's going to try to do is hit the six over to the side rail right here and make the cue ball come here and wind up somewhere behind this nine. I think. <clears throat> Here's one of the rare times you'll see one of the men use the bridge. Shot clock coming down toward 10, but no factor at all. That might work, huh? Well, it worked for the time being. But I think what Mike is going to do is hit the six, put the six over here, and bring the cue ball right to this position to be behind the seven. different. Mike took a chance there. I couldn't believe he did that. And it worked okay for him. He got lucky. I just wanted a double bank in anyway. He got lucky. I know that was just why he didn't play safe. I sure do know somebody. Yeah, only person you know is Brunswick. <laughs> <laughs> no, the five was a good shot, right? How about that one? These guys are talking to each other now, and it's early. <laughs> I go from behind. We're at 4-3. Race to nine, remember. And right now, it's pretty much up for grabs, it seems. Mike is getting away with a lot here. And uh, if he didn't get these rolls, uh, it could be a different story. So Mike Siegel can turn to the offense here now. He 
doesn't want to get straight in. Oh, he's fine. He's got to come up the table for the A. Anytime you travel the full length of the table, anything can happen. Perfect. Mike always seems to hit balls perfect. Probably the most consistent player, would you say, on the tour? Yeah, right. He, remind, he reminds me of me when I was about uh, 24. <laughs> and that makes it 5-3 now. So Mike Siegel has moved out to a two-game lead once more, and we'll come back to the Brunswick World Open Nine Ball Championship after this. Here's a look at Jim Bakula, the director of operations for Brunswick Billiards, as we mentioned. Had a little dialogue with Mike Siegel, was picking his brain as to what shot he would play on his table. Brunswick tables, incidentally, been used since 1960 in most professional tournaments. Should I bank it or don't? Siegel with a two-game lead here, and still on his feet and playing. Last game, if he didn't snooker David on that uh, double bank that he thought he was playing, uh, David could have won the game. The score would have been tied. Now he's had good success on the break, and the eight ball goes. Now look where look where Mike's cue ball is. Cue ball's right in the middle of the table, just like the and and the one if it comes near the pocket, which which it is, he's in perfect position to run out. When that ball's in the middle of the table, it gives you so much more of an advantage. I think it's going to be six three real quick, Barry. to try to draw straight back it looks like and play the four in the upper right hand corner that's it perfect Mike, if Mike gets out of line two inches he gets mad well he hasn't been mad lately so that must mean he's doing something right he tries to play this game to what we call an exact science. Is it an exact science? No, there's a margin for error. A little bit. There's a nice shot of Mike Siegel knocking if, the five ball in the back of the hole. If there's a little luck involved, it can't be an exact science, can it? I think that's true. 6-3. And lengthening. This is an easy rack played perfectly by Mike Siegel. Some textbook pocket billiards going on right now. Looks like Secretariat coming down the stretch. He does, yeah. 6-3, just like that. Mike Siegel looking the part of the champion. Captain Hook now leads it by three. We'll be back with more of the tip from Caesars right after this. Barry Tompkins, Steve Mizrak watching Mike Siegel and David Howard, two of the hot players on the tour right now and Siegel pretty much in control ran that last rack easily let's watch his break one of the best watch the cue ball again look where the cue ball is right in the middle of the table are you learning anything from absolutely that? I what? wish I could do it what do you mean? <laughs> stay away from guys like this if if you I, I, I always stay away from guys who wear vests like that. <laughs> I've got a fancy vest. When I see a vest like that, I put my hand on my wallet. <laughs> and the reason is that if a guy wears a vest like that, I know he's confident. In my opinion, he's the best modern day player there is. Uh, you can see that graphic pretty much told you what you need to know. 70 major titles. He's got a resume. It looks like a phone book, as a matter of fact. He's got about five pages of titles. If 
this was golf, he'd be a multi-billionaire. Won $40,000 in the tournament. Big payday, one of the biggest. Yeah. That was right here on ESPN, as a matter of fact. Mike's very adept at shooting uh, right-handed. I knew Mike when he was 18 years old. Now 34. Freeze. Oh, that ball off the rail. Well, there's one of those cases where he's an inch off. Yeah, I'm sorry. And it's seven to three. Well, I'm getting a good lesson here in the fine art of nine ball. Take a look at the six ball here. Well, what he has to do here, he hit he hit the six right in. And he had to make the cue ball move a little bit and jump around and come out for the nine. He's the best at what he does. Yeah, it really is. Simple as that. He really turns it into an art form. Huh? But he does have his off days, just like anybody else. No. You dirty rat. Wow. Four or five racks now. Scratched. Kicked in from nowhere. Yeah, you know, the cue Watch him get kicked in the side. Yeah. Watch the ball come off the side rail. Then, and he kicked it in. Okay. Bad shot. Bad shot. I just said bad break. So now it's David Howard. And he's got a ways to go to get back in this one, trailing 7-3. But David's got a better break than Mike. Anything can happen. In this match right here, if the score is 8-5, to five, David's not a big underdog, or dealer's Mike. For the simple reason they have such good breaks, and the table is breaking very easily. Mike, or rather David, in one of those situations where he really can't afford too many mistakes here, trailing as he is. And he hasn't made any. It's just that he hasn't had any opportunity to shoot. Upside down seven. Takes very little time. He just gets, he knows what he wants to do. He just gets up and does it. Now the time clock, not a factor with this one. No. Would neither. Neither one of these two. So this to cut the margin to seven four. And does handle it. Mike Siegel, reasonably confident with a three-game lead. Thank you, Jimmy. I thought you deserted me there for a minute. <laughs> talking to somebody in the crowd. He was talking to uh, Eva's husband, uh, Jimmy Mattia. <sighs> well, another chance to look at the best break in the game of pool. Don't you dare! Go. And he got it. Nine ball yes, goes down, did. and that is another quick game for David Howard. What did I tell you how things can just turn around? 7-5 now. Take another Watch look. Nine. Watch the nine Shoot ball. Shoot right out of the rack. In between the four and six. Escorted into the hole by Perfect. the four. Looks like the four ran interference like uh, mm. yeah. O.J. Simpson exactly. and uh, somebody else. <clears throat> Seven five. And he would love a replay. No. No. Cue uh -huh. ball. Make them all, make them all. Yeah, well you spot this one, right? No, I gotta shoot a spot shot. Oh my god. 
Well, here, three oh, balls, two balls went line. in on a break. And the two ball there. came behind the line, so I'll what has to be to done is the two ball gets spotted, and the other two balls stayed down. So Mike has to shoot a spot shot here. Mike shouldn't have any problem uh, making this ball and getting a uh, position on the three. Perfect. Powerful. Devastating. <laughs> All of those. I shudder right here. Now, he's got to shoot the three, make it in here, and he's got to play pinpoint position to make the five in the side. Got to make sure he doesn't scratch. So close to that side pocket. He didn't. The ball went down. Look at this. Well, he's right in between. He can take his, his pick here. We call this a tweener, Barry. He could shoot it in the side, or he could shoot it in the corner. I think he's going to opt to shoot it in the corner, throw the cue ball back a little bit, and play the six ball in the side pocket where he's at. And he does. He's letting the cue ball get away from him a little bit. But with Mike's powerful stroke and his shot making ability, have no fear, he'll run out here. Six balls down, now the seven on the side. Mike is on the hill, as you aptly put it. Perfect position on the nine. David Howard watches, and he will watch as Mike Siegel now goes up 8-5. So a three-game cushion. He's on the hill. One to go for Mike Siegel, and we'll be back to wrap this one up right after this. Barry Tompkins, Steve Mizrak, 8-5 now. Mike Siegel leading. Here's an important break for him. Control of the white ball. Essential. Where's the three ball? Look at this. Point. Right. Well, all he did was knock five balls in. That's all. No problem. The three couldn't hang? Did I make one or what? I want to be shooting this one, though. It looks like the table's oh, sprung a leak wow. right here. Everything's falling in. <laughs> he represents Brunswick Billiard Table, so... Well personal friends of Mr. Brunswick. Well, I think he's going to rifle his six in, pass the seven, and run out. Didn't start out like he was all that confident about that shot. Mike is like that all the time. Mike does a dance. We should call him the dance man when he, when he plays. We had a guy one time, Barry, spin around and knock a referee out with his cue. <laughs> so this Jump. will do it. This is history right here. And virtually a gimme for Mike Siegel. There it is, and he's through to the semifinals. Quick work of David Howard. Howard, the giant killer, came in here the hot player, but today he fell to Captain Hook. My thing we're playing on Brunswick. The most consistent player, and you heard him say it's good thing we're playing on Brunswick because he represents Brunswick. He knows the tables. Today the table was very kind to him. So Mike Siegel goes on 9-5 over David Howard. He's through to the semifinals, and we'll be back to talk to the winner right after this. Well, Mike Siegel on through to the semifinal round. 9-5, winner over David Howard. Mike, I think most impressive, you beat a hot player. You beat a guy who's yeah. been playing very, very well. David's been playing very well. He just won two tournaments in a row. I said he's got to give me a chance here. I mean, you know, he doesn't want to win 20 in a row. Well, I think but. he took the chance. This is the guy who's supposed to be the best breaker in the business, and you outbroke him today. Yeah, well, he was, now see, I think he was breaking too hard on this table. Now, I switched over here, and I was getting great results. The last break, I made five balls, so... 
the tables there the tables play great they're just a little loose the, the lighting and being in Nevada uh, makes the rails a little softer and therefore the pockets are a little playing easier than normal and uh, you're seeing a lot of racks run so I think you'll see that throughout the whole term I heard him say to you you must be personal friends with Mr. Brunswick I sure am yeah I've been with Brunswick for about a year and a half and I've been doing I won the uh, team challenge that we played on ESPN and uh, the tables are the best playing tables I'm fortunate to be with the company and uh, they like the relationship, and hopefully uh, I'll win my next two matches. Now you're in the semifinals. When you get to the finals, you have had phenomenal success. 14 out of 15 winners when you get to the final. Well, they call me Mr. Finals. I don't know. It's just I think I have somebody on my shoulder for that. And uh, I just seem to perk up when I, you know, my adrenaline starts flowing, and things just work out that way. And if you get, just like Gene, if you get used to that, uh, you get breaks and this and that, and things happen, and somehow you win, man. In the stars sometimes. One more and you're in the finals again. Congratulations, Mike. Steve, you got David Howard. Well, David, uh, you didn't have much of a chance there. Uh, Mike uh, shot all the balls in. He, he didn't really give you a chance to shoot. Uh, everybody forgets about the loser, yeah. uh, but I think uh, you've just won two tournaments in a row. What do you think of Mike's chances uh, for the rest of the tournament? Well, uh, he's got a real good chance to win. I felt like uh, that match right there would put one of us in the finals. Uh, I'm playing really well. I, I thought I was breaking really good. I just uh, didn't have enough time. You know, it was a real short match. You scratched twice on a the break there. I, I, that might have cost you. Yeah, that's uh, one time too many against Mike Siegel. But uh, I'd like to, if it had went two or three more sets, I would have liked it. Hey, you you won two in a row. Uh, give somebody else a chance. Give somebody else a chance. I think really the bottom line of the whole thing is one of those matches really nobody lost. It just happened that Mike Siegel went out and won it. Outstanding quarterfinal match. Mike Siegel into the semifinals, one away from the finals, and once he gets the finals, he's won 14 out of 15. Not bad. For Steve Mizrak, I'm Barry Tompkins. See you next time from Caesars Palace. The World Nine Ball Championships were brought to you by Brunswick. We're in that desert oasis of neon and glitter, Las Vegas, Nevada, where 80 men and women have gathered in the pavilion of Caesar's Palace to vie for that most coveted title of all in sport, World Champion. This is Pocket Billiards at its best, the Brunswick World Open Nine Ball Championship. Hello, everybody. I'm Barry Tompkins, and welcome to Caesar's Palace here in Las Vegas. This is the Brunswick World Open Nine Ball Championship, a circuitous route to the semifinals, but a great match for you this afternoon between Earl Strickland and Keith McGrady. And with us for expert commentary, as always, four-time U.S. Open champion, three-time world champion Steve Mizrak. This is a match that it's really hard to pick a winner. Tough match, uh, but Earl's been around a long time. He's been around the finals a long time, so... Uh, I've, I've got to give the edge to Earl here. Let's take a look at Steve Mizrak's scorecard then and see exactly how you do see it. The break and cue ball control, two really important factors. I like Strickland on the break. He hits him well and hits him hard, uh, but he always gets uh, shape on the ball that he, that he wants to shoot next. Cue ball control, again, I like Strickland. Experience, uh, they've both been around a long time. They both handle the pressure very well. And strategy's hard to pick. Well, let's, let's give them both a mark. So, but I like Strickland here. Based on the way it's gone so far through this tournament, I have to think that strategy and pressure situations are the two keys. Pressure, because McGreedy will play with your mind. Strickland's going to have to keep it together. We'll be back to get started right after this. The World Nine Ball Championships are brought to you by Brunswick, a tradition and excellence since 1845. Being a professional means being on the road for weeks at a time, staying in hotels, living out of a suitcase. But then you get to the tournament, 
and you feel right at home. Why? Because you're playing on a Brunswick. And you'll feel right at home with your Brunswick, the world's most popular pool tables. Beautiful Brunswick slate tables for the home, designed for maximum playability and durability. Brunswick, a tradition of excellence since 1845. For your nearest dealer, see the yellow pages or call toll-free. Don't win nothing for practice. Don't win nothing if you don't. All right, let's head. After a long day of hard knocks... That's right. Yeah. Head for the beer that goes down smooth as a mountain stream. Boy. Here. This one don't bust so hard. Head for the mountains of Bush beer. Triple Crown Thoroughbreds won for half a million dollars in a summer showdown. See all the horses that make headlines at the Haskell Invitational, Saturday afternoon at 5 Eastern, live on ESPN. Barry Tompkins with Steve Mizrak back at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas. Four players left in the competition. This is a semifinal match between Earl Strickland and Keith McCready. This one really promises to be both interesting and perhaps volatile. Two very outspoken players. Let's take a look at the rules, and they haven't changed for all these weeks. Object of the game still is to pocket the nine ball whenever you can pocket the nine ball, but you have to shoot the balls in numerical order, starting with... Hello, everybody. I'm Barry Tompkins, and welcome to Caesars Palace here in Las Vegas. Well, it's taken weeks, but here we are at the semifinals, and this should be a great match today. Buddy Hall and Mike Siegel, two guys who have spent a lot of time around a pool table. And with us, as always, for expert commentary, Steve Mizrak. This one matches up very, very evenly, Steve. I don't know who to pick here. Uh, why don't we look at my scoreboard and see what happens? All right, let's do that. Let's take a look and start at the top, first of all, with the break. I like Siegel on a break. He controls the cue ball. And I like Siegel with the uh, cue ball uh, control. He plays more straight pool than Buddy. Experience, even. They've both been around a long time. Pressure, even. They both can handle tough pressure situations. But Hall's a nine-ball player. And I like his strategy end of it. These guys are really interesting in the fact that they both really sort of march to a different drummer, and Buddy Hall's drummer beats a lot slower than does the drum of Mike Siegel. So whoever can dictate the tempo of this match might win it. We'll be back to get started. Tompkins with Steve Mizrak. We're at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas, Nevada. This is the Brunswick World Open Nine Ball Championship, and we are getting down, if you'll pardon the expression, to short strokes. Buddy Hall, Mike Siegel in this one. A couple of guys who've had many laps around a pool table. Let's take a look at the rules, and the rules are as they have been. The object of the game, pocket the nine ball. That's all pretty easy. You shoot the balls in order, starting with the number one ball, assuming that's still on the table after the break. And the player will shoot until he misses. The game's over when the nine ball is pocketed, whenever the nine ball is pocketed. The player will lose his turn when any foul is committed. And the most simple and basic of all, first player to win nine games wins the match. In this case, not only wins the match, but moves on into the final and a chance at $15,000 worth of prize money. Here's the lag. Buddy Hall, the orange ball, Mike Siegel, the yellow ball. Too fast, both of them. And Mike Siegel will break to start things. No secrets with these two guys. They've played each other many, many times. I don't know where to break from, though. Here's the prize money, 15000 as we mentioned, to the winner. $7,000 runner-up money. $50,000 of total prize money. And the prize monies in this sport in general escalating. Well, they're getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Let's take a look at the path to the semifinals for these two. Buddy Hall beat Mark Mario, beat George Brunt, and then beat Bob Hunter. Nine games to six. Wasn't as easy as the score might look. Mike Siegel, on the other hand, had a relatively easy time with David Howard. Actually lost a set to Jeff Carter and lost a set to Sammy Jones, but he seems to be getting his game in gear at the right time. Well, he better because he's playing a very tough competitor right now, and Buddy never oh. quits until it's all over. Uh, I heard Mike say he's very nervous, very nervous. Uh, he talks to himself a lot, but he's a magician. He gets the job done. Call him Captain Hook, his nickname. Plays the defensive posture as well as the offensive posture. Knocked the nine ball in on a couple of occasions off the break in his quarterfinal game. Got Notice the last how he, roll how there. He pushed that ball in the side. And if he didn't make that ball, you know, Buddy would have been in perfect spot. He's got a basically a simple run out here. Make the one from here into the pocket. 
Play position for the two right here. Three is uh, right now under Mike's arm. And it's a, just a very basic, simple run out. Simple for you. What about for you, Barry? Not, not simple. Not simple. So that is the thing that amazes me about this game and the proficiency level that these play at is you're always three or four shots ahead. And I think the guy who plays in the basement of his house or at the local billiard parlor is thinking one shot. Game one to Mike Siegel. Three, four, five, six, eight, game over. These early games will really tell. Again, I say it's uh, whoever gets out to the lead usually is going to wind up winning. Some of the matches in past weeks, uh, some guys came, got out to the lead and uh, somebody came back real quick and real strong, uh, but the guy who got out to the lead usually wins. Mike Siegel in his quarterfinal match started a little bit slowly, but here he's starting at a gallop. Well, he, he looks like he, he doesn't want to shoot that ball on the side, but I, he's trying to figure out where he's going to put the six. I think he's got it all under control. Mike is a little bit like Earl Strickland in the way he talks to himself. He gets absolutely perfect or maybe one inch out of line, but he still talks to himself that he got in the right, in the wrong spot. Perfect. So far, he's just about perfect and this man, Buddy Hall, yet to get off the chair. Mike gave a little whistle there that he thought he didn't get it by the nine. And so Mike Siegel runs the rack relatively easy. He takes a one game to not lead. We're at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas, Nevada. Coming back right after this. Looks like he's going to try to curve it around or he might be jumping it. He's going to try to hit the two right here. He might bank it. He might play it here. Anything's liable will happen. He jumped it, Barry. No, hit the eight and made the two. Unbelievable shot. I make that shot all the time. <laughs> <laughs> In my dreams. Two games to one. Mike Siegel over Buddy Hall now. Siegel to break. Generates a lot of power. What? Look at this. This ball slide huh. through for him. It's my lucky seven ball. Mike, twice I went in. Mike is, is the best player. Twice. But he also gets a lot of rolls, so to speak. Well, so it's, it's his lucky seven. And if it was the three, it'd be his lucky three. Yeah. <laughs> Good shot. Came out a little bit too far, but he's going to try to make a billiard. He's trying to make the four ball by hitting the two first. And his only worry here is uh, getting shape on the two. Good shot. Excellent shot. Couldn't no. get the kissy. No shape on the two. Couldn't get the key as this. No. Mike has no shot. The two and the nine are tied. If the five wasn't in the side, he might have a clear shot to make the five, the nine combination in the side. But it looks like he's not going to do that. Can feel the 15 coming up. Now, what does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> Tell you what he's doing. He's playing the two ball off the nine right here. He's trying to kiss the nine, and trying to make the two. He did. That's a great shot. Great shot. Look where the three is. Three's hanging. Five, six, eight, nine, three to one single. You know, you take the suspense out of this. Oh, I've seen this so often from the chair. <laughs> and the chair is where Buddy Hall is right now. One of those helpless positions. Only sport.
that I can think of that you just can't do anything about your own success or failure. An old, old great player um, by the name of Irving Crane once told me, he said, son, he said, it's not how good you play, it's how good your opponents play that makes you win or lose. And if you stop and think about that for a while in this game, those words are absolutely true. It's true. Well, right now, Buddy Hall's opponent is playing pretty darn good. Mike Siegel has moved out to a 3-1 lead. I played it. I was playing the two. Uh, Buddy's I figure if I unbeaten hit it string like uh, thin, it on TV is uh, in jeopardy. Very much so. Back over here, play safe. No, I was playing the two. But I figure if I'm going to miss it, I'm going to try and miss it thin. You know? made a good shot there. A little dialogue between the two. Some backhanded compliment by Buddy Hall. <laughs> Thinks but, he buddy, played a different but, shot. Buddy doesn't oh, make. Uh, I know 15's coming up. Too many now, you know different I mean? facial I can't expressions. Look at else. Uh, he just gets up and uh, goes about you know his business. I mean? See, when that comes up, you can't change your mind. Doesn't Mike know. never spend any you extra energy. Look. No. There he is. I don't know about this break. I'm just dribbling him in here. You know. Working. Meanwhile, it's working. He keeps running out and yeah. getting position on the one or the next ball. He didn't dribble that one in. No. Got three balls, two balls. <laughs> Look at the one. The one, I mean, again, another easy run out for Mike. Yeah. <clears throat> the, the one straight in the hole right here. He's got to play position, very simple position. Uh, Looks like he made the two, so the three ball would be the next shot. I don't know what he's thinking about here. He's, he's not even, uh, he's hesitating. He's gotta be careful he doesn't foul the balls that he's shooting over. Oh no. He hit oh, that yes. so hard. Okay, the two. The two is right here. He's in perfect shape for a very, very simple run out. Three in the side, four in the corner. Cue ball come off the rail, back up here, make the five. In the side, seven and nine. Very simple run out. Mike Siegel trying to make it three in a row. And it looks for all the world as though he will. You have the caliber of a player like Mike Siegel. He doesn't make many mistakes. And if he does, you better take advantage of him. Well, Buddy Hall's type of player who can take advantage, but not from where he is right now, and that is looking on. So this for 4-1. Mike will win by keeping Buddy in the chair. And Mike Siegel easily runs that rack. His third. These are the World Open Championships in nine ball, and we'll be back after this. Here's Jim Bakula, the director of operations from Brunswick Billiards. We rejoin the action with Buddy Hall having won three of the last five games to pull within two of Mike Siegel. We're at Caesars Palace. Six games to four, Mike Siegel leading Buddy Hall. But Buddy Hall is the man who's at the table and Mike Siegel is the man who's in the chair. So that means that Buddy Hall is very much in it. Winner of this moves on to the finals. Harry, if you put a fur coat on Buddy, what would he look like? <laughs> a bear. That's it. Grizzly. He's going to dub for Merlin Olsen in the next movie. In his next movie. It would be funny. Buddy made the one. He's got a long way to go to make the two. If Buddy can spear this one in with confidence, get on the three and run out, he's got a good chance. Tough shot, though. Nice shot. Nice shot. Yeah. He got away with it. Good shot. 
His great touch. Again, I'm amazed the man his size with the touch that he has. Nice little run out. Three ball in the pocket. Stick for the four right in the side. Stick for the five right here. Make it go. After the five, he'll position the cue ball right about here so he can make the six right here, then the seven and the eight. Simple run out, but he should be behind one game. Cosmo. That's it. <laughs> you said it. You're I learning. Learned. You're I learned. learning quick. I'd rather do this with you up here than be down there. <laughs> I tell it's a lot. It's easier. Of, it's an easier game up I here. I tell a lot of lies. He's about three inches from where I predicted. Well, it wasn't too long ago we were talking about Buddy Hall struggling. I get the sense he's not struggling anymore. No. Nope. Eight inside, seven inside, and the nine. Great shot. But he's one game behind, but more important, he's breaking. Yeah, he's playing, and Mike Siegel is watching. And hit that one as just long perfectly. As, he, as long as he breaks, he controls the match. Mr. Expression, Buddy Hall. There he is. Six games to five. You know, both of these guys... Uh, when they decide what they're going to do, they, they get right down and do it. And they get their business done. Buddy's more uh, plotting. He's more thinking. Mike is more uh, spectacular. <coughs> Both great shot makers, though. I mean, there's really something to be learned for somebody like myself sitting here watching these guys. So Buddy Hall has come back here now, and he will break, hope to run the rack, and square the match. Big, big break here. Needs to get some luck. Doesn't get it. Well, he got a little luck here. He's got no shot. He's got no no pocket for the one right here. So what Mike might do is slice the one down here and put the cue ball somewhere on this rail right about here. Or he may play the combination. That's what he's looking at, uh, Barry. He's looking at the combination. But Mike now is taking the chance. I don't know if he should do this. Okay, now he just moved the other way. Yeah, man. Now he's got the clock con to contend with. Down to 10 seconds. He is going to go for the combination, yep. looks like. Yep. And he got it. Mike's being bothered by that shot clock. And it's interesting because all through the quarterfinals, we didn't see the shot clock bother anybody. Right. Mike is fortunate that the one stayed there. He miscued right there. Now how much time do I have? He miscued. He's getting his tip tapper out. Tip tapper makes little, uh, little indentations on the top of the tip so that the, the tip becomes more abrasive so that it grabs the cue ball. So he doesn't miscue again. He miscued that time and made the ball. That Mike, doesn't happen too often. Mike is real aware of that clock. And again, that's just another little thing that slips into your head in a crucial match like this. It stays there. May have overdrawn that ball. He's got one problem. He's got to make the four go in this pocket right here. He's got to play position to make the five go in this pocket. But look at down here with the six and nine. I don't think that the six can pass by the nine to make it. So he's got to bring the cue ball on this side to make the six go, go where he's shooting the four. Overdrew the ball. Now. Mike overdrew the ball. He's 
got to draw it right over to the side rail. Perfect shot. Perfect shot. See what happened on the break, Barry? But Buddy didn't make a ball. Left Mike an easy shot. Ran out. Break is so important. Oh, but yeah. more important, after the shot or after the break is, is important. Good shot. And so Mike Siegel now gets back on the offense. Just when it looked like Buddy Hall was making a run. Siegel needs this and the nine ball for 7-5. This is like blackjack. You win three or four in a row, and then you lose two or three in a row. But only in blackjack, you I'm lose waiting. ten in a row. <laughs> and in blackjack, you're at someone else's mercy. <laughs> so Mike Siegel runs through Brutal. that rack. It's seven games to five. Siegel ball. leads by two. First to nine. We'll be back to Vegas after this. Barry Tompkins, Steve Mizrak. This is the pavilion at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas. Semifinal match in the Brunswick World Open Nine Ball Championships. And this man, Mike Siegel, about to break. Going from the left side this time, changing up. And going from right to left. Now he'll go from left to right on the break. He leads by two games. Made a ball on the break. <laughs> Looks like he I can, can make this. Looks like he can yeah, he can go sure in between the seven Gap and time, eight right here to come down here and make the one go in his pocket. If he does, yeah, I gotta shoot. Well, he can do it. Now, from the sound of his voice, he's very confident. Now, things are going for him. Those two balls were just a shade closer together. He wouldn't have a shot. The one ball would be by the hole, and you couldn't push out to any spot on the table without leaving an easy shot on the one. You he see can the make gap. This. That's the gap he's got to go through between the seven and the eight. He can make this. He's not even elevating his cue. He's got to play position. Excuse me? Overcut it. Now what did he do for Buddy? Well, Buddy can make this. Well, Buddy can make this. Close. It was close. <laughs> but the score is seven five and shooting this long way, trying to make the ball go here. He's got to play position for a ball way on the other side of the table. Buddy's in a whole load of trouble because once Mike gets to eight, it's tough to hold him at eight. So that makes this shot that much more important. Oh, so important you can't even imagine. Didn't get it. Well, just... Buddy's undercutting God. everything. Buddy's struggling right now. Uh, oh, to man, I'm telling you, it bent that much. She jumped, jumped up. The cue ball done that. Both men are complaining that the ball is, is rolling off a little bit. Scratch. Oh my goodness. So again, the door <laughs> pops open for Buddy Hall. Mike is trying to uh, tighten up the match, it looks like. <laughs> yeah, just for fun. Yeah. Why don't he do those things when he plays me? I don't understand. <laughs> Buddy's got a difficult shot to play position on here. <laughs> I don't think he's going to really love that. Well, I don't know how close he is to that ball. Well, it looks like he's about a quarter oh, of an okay. inch. Oh, okay. Okay. He's liable to bank this ball. Back, in, back where he's standing, the pocket he's covering with his body, he's going to bank it over in that pocket. Oh, we just snuck it by the nine ball. Great shot. Watch the shot again. Watch him sneak it by the nine ball. Right. It's the two, and I mean... Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Great shot. No, that could spur Buddy on, given the added confidence that he needs. 
He's by no means out of this. Seven no. five. It's going to be seven six, Bear. Dead straight. He's absolutely dead straight. He has no angle. He has no angle for the to, to make the five to bring the cue ball up here. So what he's going to have to do is just make the five and roll. Well, he, he's elevating his cue, so he's uh, evidently going to hit it low and try to force the cue ball up. Only well, force it a little bit, not much. But this should be no problem for Buddy. Cut it inside, or he can shoot it in the corner. Either one. I think he's going to cut it inside. Looks like an easier shot. Come down two rails. Oh, not enough. Not enough. That's not vintage Buddy Hall there. What he wanted to do. He wanted to bring the cue ball right down here. He's so short here, uh, he doesn't know what to do. He's, he's going to cut the eight in the pocket here. He might try to hit the nine. He might go behind the nine. If he goes behind the nine too far, the ball's out of wind up here. So that's a touchy shot. Yeah. First, he's got to worry about making the ball, which he did. He came behind the nine. Perfect. That is a great shot. He hit it very yeah. slowly. And hitting him slow, like I told you before, is a difficult shot. So here's Buddy Hall now to make it 7-6. Nice shot. <laughs> well, just when it looked like Mike Siegel was about to close the door on him, Buddy Hall came right back. 7-6. Even though Mike is ahead one game, Barry, the break nullifies that one game. Buddy's up there breaking. And very easily, Buddy uh, Caliber, the... Uh, like Buddy, a player like Buddy can can run the game out. So here's Buddy Hall. Nobody's gotten real lucky on the break and sank the nine ball today. Oh. Buddy's going to get the seven ball to go, or six. Where'd ball. that one come from? He <laughs> said, "Where'd that one come <laughs> from? Where did that one come oh. from?" Buddy could tie this match up real quick. <sighs> He's got a shot on the one right here. But his main problem is getting the cue ball back into either this position or this position on this side so that he can make the two. Nice down angle. I like that. Oh, he missed it. Oh, and geez, scratch. Don't do that. Ball in hand for Mike Siegel. And just when it looked again like Buddy Hall was going to get on a run, he has oh. to sit. It's going to be the lightest cue ball in the world. Buddy said it's got to be the lightest cue ball it's in the world. It's got to be the lightest cue ball on earth. Buddy had a chance here. A good chance. Now, if Mike wins this game and is breaking, looks like it'll be vintage Mike Siegel. Well, let's see how he gets on the four. He can do one of two things. He can come around the nine. Oh. He can come around the nine like this and come out. Or he can go straight down and back up and out. Nestled the four in, okay, came back came out. off the rail. And he shoots the four down the rail, stays right there, maybe draws back a little bit. Seven in the side, eight in the corner, and eight six, Mike. This is the key shot right here. Good shot. Mike is shaking his head. I could be shaking my head at that score. <laughs> With being up at the table. Got to be careful he doesn't nip to seven. Slow roll this one. Two 
two balls from eight, six. Well, Buddy Hall gave him one little opening, and Mike Siegel sprinted right through it. Buddy's not playing well. He didn't play well in uh, this set right here. And uh, Mike gave him a few opportunities, and Buddy didn't capitalize on them. And so Mike Siegel now one game from moving on to the finals in this Brunswick this World ball. Open and nine ball like championships. It's been going on for a while. Believe me. There's Buddy Hall. I tried to spin that. You know, I should have overcut the one and played well, safe when I did The it. red circle cue ball, the one we used that shot there, that shooting it. It's going to miss the pocket that far. Still talking about miss the, the cue ball. That far. It it's interesting in enough that players and in your game a little bit. always talk about the shots they no, missed instead of the shots they made. Yeah. You always relive a game. Like fainting. Dead faint. Fainting. I relive a lot of things that uh, in the past that uh, were bad. I remember things that happened to me a long time ago. Gives you ulcers, don't you know that, Steve? Uh, <laughs> uh, that's why I'm not out there. I don't want <laughs> ulcers. Not by choice. See, we're up here in the toy shop. Yeah. Huh? It is rolling. He made a ball. Made the five. Okay. Mike could clean it up here. I'm going to try to cut the one in, I think. Come down here for the two. Somewhere in this position right here. If he misses the one, he still might be behind the, the, these trio of balls. For the one ball, uh, if it doesn't hang in the hole, he might leave him safe. high left hand English here. We might even play safe here. Uh, he'd be wise. Uh, yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> Talking Jeff, about the clock. Yeah, Jeff Carter said uh, 15 seconds. Played safe is what he did. But did he play safe enough? Well, he tried to get behind those three balls and didn't do it. Shot. You know, he can't even look at it. Yeah, that's all right. Well, no, I'm just trying to get the cue ball behind the three in the gap. But I don't have time to look around or anything. You know Mike's, uh, Mike's wife said that's all right. She's coaching him. Yeah, he's still complaining about the clock. He has been right along. Yeah. He's winning eight to six. He's got not much to complain about. Oh, too hard, buddy. Too hard. That's behind the four. Did he luck out? Uh, Might have. I don't know. There's Siegel's wife. Chris, she coaches him from the sidelines like he needs coaching. Right? <laughs> Leonard Bloodworth. Mike Siegel, eight games, Buddy Hall seven, but the most important factor, you see Buddy Hall standing at the head of the table. He's the man with the cue in his hand, so he, at least for the moment, can be the master of his own fate. Here's a look at Buddy, 42 years old, out of Paducah, Kentucky, ranked number three right now, has beaten all the great players. 40, the man on my right. 42? 42. He's been 42 for seven years. <laughs> Break all important. Oh. Look, oh, look at that. ball. How do you like it? Whoa. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing. He almost hey. jumped out of his suspenders there. <laughs> I almost jumped out of my jacket. That is both lucky and great. Watch the, watch the nine oh. ball get kicked in. Watch that five kick that nine right in. What a great kick. Boys, we're starting to have fun now. Oh, my goodness gracious. <laughs> Did you hear Buddy say, boys, we're starting to have fun now. Mike Siegel just took another puff on his cigarette. Where was and, uh, that? He's having no fun. <laughs> 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 he's looking for the same spot here. Whoa. Uh, I got excited. I almost jumped out of my chair there. <laughs> well, Mike got a game in that same fashion a little bit earlier. So now we're all even in the luck category. It's twice it got me. On this opening shot, you needed more than 45 seconds. Real big shot. right here. Mike keeps complaining about that, uh, about that break, about the, sh about the shot clock. It's yeah, bothering it him too much. Definitely has the whole match. Well, this is for it all here. Yeah. No, no. It's a, oh, it's 8-8. Eight, eight. That's right. Eight. He's looking for another one. That's what he said. He's looking for the same spot. Where is Look, it? Ooh. Boy, he had it rolling, too, didn't he? Oh, he has a lot of problems here. And 
He's got these three balls right here on the side. He's got two tied up here. He should use his head here. Play a little safe. That brings Mike Siegel up off the chair. Just kind of check it out. Yeah. What I think he's going to do is bank the one over by the four, seven, and two. No. Oh, don't do that. What are you doing, Cease? Huh. God. Well, he gave him an opening. He's right in the middle. He hit both sides of it the same distance. Right in between these balls. He can make he can make a good hit on that one. I think what what Buddy should have done was put the one over here and put the cue ball here so that he has a big alleyway right here blocking. Would have been better than what he did. With Mike's firepower, with his ability to pocket, he's able to get out from anywhere. Again, yeah, there's the shot clock. He's, he's guard been, against that. You know. Mike's been complaining about the shot clock down inside 10 again. Now it's at five. Didn't get it. That shot clock is bothering him. It really is. Look at this. Mike is on a roll again. Can he Slow hit the one? spin. Should have hit it with inside. I don't know what to do. I couldn't, couldn't hit it with inside. I don't know if I he can hit the one. The avoid scratching the side. I don't know if there's nine balls in the way. He's, he's uh, got to make well, the one. Well, it it looks outside. like it's going to be straight in anyway. And the two is tied up here. He's got a very difficult situation here. And it's 8-8. Eight, eight. I don't want to be out there. <laughs> well, if Buddy can make this somehow. Oh, he's jumping. He's jumping. He's jumping over half the nine. I think he'll hit it. I don't think he'll make it. He'll hit it. Oh, no, he didn't want to do that. Gave it a run. He didn't want to do that. That's the difference. I'm dead. Mike has got I'm two opportunities there. here. Why? Yeah, he's very, right very there. important. He could either cut the one in, or he can play safe. He can make the one go three cushions behind the nine and come up the top of the table. Doing. Oh, perfect shot. Oh, oh. He's dead. Jail. 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 Absolutely jail. Buddy did this to himself, by the way. My only hope was it go in. Muddy, uh, uh, Mike has got no piece of cake. He still has these balls tied up here. Even though he has cue ball in hand, he has to still worry about getting position on, on the balls that are in this cluster still right here. Still looks tough. Let me give you the whole picture here, though. We're at eight all. This is the semifinals, world championship. Winner moves on into the finals. And what we've got here is really yeah, a tactical I know, I know. game. You heard what he said. It still looks tough. So he gets the one. Now where's the cue ball? Now he's got to take a gamble. I don't know if I like this. I don't know if I like this. He's, he's got to cut the one, two. A little in. far. I don't know what he's going to do with the four that's behind the seven here. If he hits the four, the four's level will wind up behind the seven, and the cue ball's level will wind up here. So we don't know what's going to happen here. We don't know what he's going to do. He might even miss the four and come over and back. This could be the shot of the match here, for better or this worse. This is the shot of the match, by the way. Perfect. Perfect. Oh, ho, 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 ho. He's no safety. Home. Bah. Well, oh, now what? Wow, Looks wow. like it's perfect. Yeah, I don't know. Stop here. I don't oh, know I like it. if he can make this ball in the corner son of a gun he wants to make it down here but i don't know if it'll pass the seven so if it doesn't pass the seven he's son looking to try to make it in the side pocket now you're talking about a very touchy shot here 
Here's make, the shot of the game, Bear. Make it in the side. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. No. God almighty, how do you like this? Not touch the seven. Mm, he's in a bad spot. Look at this. He's also got to make the shot in five seconds. Got it. Good shot. That, one that was the shot of the match right there. Good shot. Mm, he's made a hell of an out. Good shot. He put, wow, he's ducking, I'll tell you that. Gotta get every roll in the world. And meanwhile, every Cecil one of Buddy Hall bemoaning his luck. With Mike Siegel now playing like a confident man. <laughs> You'd be confident too if you <laughs> had true. two balls left and all you needed was one game. That's true. Eight ball first. How much time? How much time? And 45. Uh, <laughs> Mike's playing to the crowd and playing to the clock. Sing and dance here. And if he misses cues, he won't sing and dance. And he got it. So Mike Siegel is on through to the championships. A most interesting match. Well played match by both people. I didn't Siegel, you think, uh, all you want to do is get off the championship. Really, stop. We'll be back. You're dead. I am with the winner, Mike Siegel, and Mike, we had set up in the booth this probably shot of the match. Yeah, it sure was. Uh, see where the cue ball is? It's on the rail. I tried to stay off the rail three or four inches, then hit the four and just stick behind the seven. The four didn't look like it could go, but uh, there was only, you know, like so many seconds left. I had to shoot. I figured if I hit it easy, if I don't make it, he might be snookered behind the seven, but I didn't like it. it happened to and, go in. And that, of course, relief. No 45 second clock to worry about here. You could have sung a tune before you knocked the nine ball in. That's my favorite shot. So there it was, and the favorite shot, of course, the game winner, and that puts you into the finals. They had a tough opponent today in Buddy Hall. Let's talk for just a moment, Mike, about the shot clock. It really hadn't come into play until the semifinals, but it really did today. It sure did. See, on, uh, well, this is something new. You know, there's going to be a little mistakes here and there. I'm surprised nobody's run over yet, you know. But, like, one time I had a, I could have played a safety on the one. I had about four, five, or six different options. And by the time I figured out what I wanted to do, the guy says I only have so many seconds left, so I had to shoot fast. And... And it ended up getting eight eight. I mean, I, I could have I could have locked him out at uh, nine six. I think it was eight six. I made a big mistake, two big mistakes. But uh, you know, it's something I'll improve on. I think you need maybe a couple more seconds here and there. A tough match, no question about it. But I would think that now, in retrospect, has got to help you looking ahead to the final. Oh sure, yeah. I mean, uh, I'm playing good. I'm breaking the balls good. I feel good. I mean, you know, I believe that uh, that sometimes it's just kind of in the stars for for the certain players win. Like the time I kicked the three, the nine win, and that was like hitting a slot machine. Stars were aligned for you today. Wish you the best in the finals. Right, thanks, That's Mike Siegel, a winner, tough winner, but a winner over Buddy Hall. He's on through to the finals. Back with Steve Mizrak to wrap things up right after this. Well, Steve, very tough victory today, but again, a W is a W, and that moves him on into the final. Mike uh, seems to live over a star, and uh, he's been on a roll, and he's been on a roll for a few years. Uh, he's a great player, but he gets a lot of luck. Uh, Buddy had no luck there, and uh, he could have won the match very easily. Doesn't get any easier from here for him. He plays Earl Strickland. Earl's playing great. <laughs> it's going to be some match. I'll tell you, Earl has a roll of the table. He's confident. Mike, yeah, a little hesitant. Uh, sometimes he makes his mistakes. Uh, it's going to be a tough match. I don't know who's going to win. For today, though, he is a winner. He took it down to the last game, but he won it. Mike Siegel through to the final. He'll play Earl Strickland. From here at Caesars Palace, for Steve Mizrak, I'm Barry Tompkins. See you next time. The World Nine Ball Championships were brought to you by Brunswick, a tradition and excellence since 1845.
Today, we're in that desert oasis of neon and glitter, Las Vegas, Nevada, where 80 men and women have gathered in the pavilion of Caesar's Palace to vie for that most coveted title of all in sport, World Champion. This is Pocket Billiards at its best, the Brunswick World Open Nine Ball Championship. Hello, everybody. I'm Barry Tompkins, and welcome once more to Caesar's Palace here in Las Vegas, Nevada. Well, it all started 10 weeks ago. We started with 64 players in the men's draw. We are now down to two. This one is the final. This is for all of it. Earl Strickland and Mike Siegel, two of the best players in the land, head on against each other. And joining us for expert commentary, a guy who has seen plenty of these two. He's a four-time U.S. Open champion and a three-time world champion, Steve Mizrak. And Steve, how do you see this match? And let's look at it on your scoreboard. These are two of the best players. I mean, these are number one and number two. I wouldn't want to play either one away the scoreboard i mean even up everywhere straight down the line tremendous match up here i don't know who's gonna win all right that being said then what about mike siegel what does he have to do to win this match he's got to control his emotions don't worry about the shot clock and finally what about strickland what does he have to do he's got to keep mike off the table he's got to make the nine if he makes the nine he wins keeping the player's mind on business. That's really the bottom line of the whole thing. And we talked to both Earl Strickland and Mike Siegel about the most important element perhaps in this final match, concentration. Concentration uh, is uh, the biggest, I'd say 90% of the game too. You know, you have to be there physically, but you have to be aware of everything that's going on. Mistakes, one or two mistakes can beat you at any time. And concentrating is one of the big roles in this game. Uh, well, the concentration is a big part of the game. I find that when I'm playing real good, I'm concentrating well, and it's just something that comes as I keep winning matches in a tournament. When I'm not playing good, it just seems like I can't get my concentration, and it's something that I don't believe anybody knows why or what causes. It's just something that when you're playing good, you've got your total concentration, and uh, everything seems to fall in place. Cogent words from the participants. Well, Steve and I are going to go up to the booth and watch this with you, and we'll be back with a break right after this break. Barry Tompkins with Steve Mizrak. We're at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas, Nevada. This is the Brunswick World Open Nine Ball Championship, and this, folks, is, in fact, the championship. Earl Strickland versus Mike Siegel. Numbers one and two, really, in the world. These are the two best players right now in the game of pocket billiard. The object of this game, of course, is to pocket the nine ball. Sometimes easier said than done, and the player must shoot all the balls in numerical order, beginning with a one ball. The player shoots until he misses. The game is over when the nine ball is pocketed, whether that's pocketed in succession or not, but it must come off the ball that comes in succession. The player loses his turn when any foul is committed, and of course, the first player to win nine games will win the match. This one is for the money. That's Mike Siegel on the left with the mustache, and Earl Strickland on the right with the mustache. <laughs> in the final, Str uh, Strickland and uh, Mike, I, I believe Mike has beaten Strickland uh, more times than and Strickland has beaten Siegel. It's time for a nine-bagger. <laughs> time for a nine-bagger, he said. Here's the prize money. So this one really counts here. More than twice as much will go to the winner than to the runner-up. I got 150 of that. 150th of that. I That's right. finished ninth through 16. A lot of money here. Nine. Let's take a look at the road to the final for Earl What's Strickland, the race? first what, of all. Nine? They beat Keith McCready. 9-7. It was an outstanding match. Before that, he had Dan Louie, the Northwest champion. He did beat Jim Rempe, though, and started with a victory in three sets over Richard Ambrose. So he's lost one set, the first set that he played. For Mike Siegel, not quite as easy. Buddy Hall really gave him all he wanted. Nine games to eight. He, too, lost a couple sets in the early competition, one to Jeff Carter and one to Sammy Jones. But the bottom line is he's here, and he's playing for the money. He'll break left to right. Strickland right now is playing better than Mike. I'm going to pick Strickland in this match. I think he could be right, actually. I'm not going to go against you. I've been doing that for the last 10 weeks. I didn't like Mike's break right away. Didn't hit him solid. Look where the cue ball is. It's not in the middle of the table. But I hit him. We're going to take another look at this break. Because I was making balls. Watch the cue ball slide down. You don't want that to happen. You want the cue ball to wind up in the middle of the table, even if you don't make anything. So Earl Strickland will shoot first from Greensboro, North Carolina. Tough layout right here. What I think he should do, I don't know if he, uh, if 
he thinks the same way I do right now. Uh, looks like he's looks like he's cutting the one in the side. You see the shot clock ticking down. I mean, nice shot there. Shot clock ticking down. Got down about six seconds. Now that has not been a problem for Earl Strickland throughout the nope. competition here for all these weeks, but it has been a problem for Mike Siegel. It was a dis definitive problem in a semifinal match with Buddy Hall. Could have a quick game here. Can a nine billiard off to two, Barry? Earl Strickland likes those kinds of shots, and he's had great success with them. See, he can play a double shot here. He can almost play the nine and play safe. Tried the nine. Didn't make it. He also tried to play safe and got away with it. He, Mike can hit the two, but he has no, no pocket. Uh, the pocket here is blocked up. What he can try to do, possibly, is bank the two right here this way. But I think Mike starts to think he's going to play safe. He's going to shoot at the two, knock the two down here, and bring the cue ball right here behind this three ball. Well, they call him Captain Hook, and it is for that reason that he plays these kinds of shots extremely well. Look at this shot. Perfect. Left the alley. Left the alley. Oh. Right in the window. Right in between the five and the six. He can shoot this two right here. Uh oh, he overcut it. Oh, he did. But he didn't leave Siegel a shot. No, he didn't. He overcut it for a specific reason. Whew. It's tough getting started, I guess. If he undercut it, that ball would have hung right in the hole. And Siegel would have had a shot at the two. Since he overcut it, he hit it off the side rail, came back where Siegel doesn't have a shot. So what we've got right now is kind of a sparring session. Right. Where both men a little slow out of the blocks, playing more of a defensive posture. Did well to hit it. Okay, Strickland's back. So I hit it on the, you know, hit it like on that side and keep the freeze the cue ball. Mike Siegel will play to the crowd a great deal. Strickland not quite as talkative. Relatively simple run out from here. Earl's got to be careful he doesn't snooker himself on the six. Great shot. Earl's been making great shots right along. Yes. Well, not too hard, but he's okay. There's no problem. Going. Well, he's three inches out of the line. <laughs> Game one to Strickland right here. Textbook stuff here from Earl Strickland. Solid. Solid. Whap. When those balls go in the pocket like that. And so Earl Strickland about to run this one out. This one won't go in slow. Right in the back of the hole. And so Earl Strickland jumps out in front. One game to none. There's Mike Siegel. He's won more than seven goals. And Strickland trying to put an end to that right now. So Earl Strickland, one zip up on Mike Siegel, stands at the head of the table. How's his break? Good. Good. I like his break better than Mike's. Uh, if Mike doesn't control that cue ball and wind up in the middle of the table, Earl's break is better. Get some harder. This right here could be the tone of the whole match. What happened here is a one and the two got tied up. If the one was open, say if the one was over here, Mike would cut it in the pocket and run out. But he doesn't have a shot on the one. 
so you can't finish if you can't start, right? Well, that shot clock is working again. Mike's going to hear 15 seconds pretty quick. It's 20 right now, 19. You watch it tick down. They're going to say 15. Listen. He's looking to play the combination now. Got Made it. it. He just nipped the seven. Great shot. Well, look where the two ball's going. Two ball wound up. Looks like it wound up right in front of the pocket. Looks like Mike has to play another combination. The one into the two. Should have no problem with this. See if success breeds success. Won't hit this hard either. Position play. Got it. Well. He had to make sure he controlled that one. So he really didn't want to smack that ball real hard. Mike should have no problem running the rest of these. Only the five might give him a problem. Now he has to position himself from the three to the four. So this is a race to nine format. First player to nine wins it, in this case, wins the $15,000 prize money and the title world Touch, champion. Touchy shot right here, Barry. He's got to go two rails. Looks like he's going two rails. No? Yep. No, please, hit it. You know, Mike got a lucky break there. I'll take all of those he can get. I don't blame him. General consensus is that he gets more lucky breaks than anybody out there. <laughs> that was real Strickland. I kind of agree with the general consensus. <laughs> Never a doubt. No, he, can, he can play, he can do two things. <clears throat> he can shoot the ball in the corner, or he can play the combination. But if he plays the combination, he's got to guard against the six going to the side rail. See, what he can do is he can hit this eight, make the eight in his pocket, but the six is liable to wind up here. Three combinations in this game. He should be okay. It's not the greatest in the world, but he should be okay. Keep your opponent on his seat. That's... Oh. Looks Story. like he'll, he'll pull the cue ball back over to where his arm is, where his hand is on the table. He's got to avoid the side pocket. That's the only problem. No. Uh, Whoa! Oh, he did look okay. out. Did Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Thank you. <laughs> so we're tied at one. I spun that ball. They're all strict. I spun all the ball. This guy gets the ball. Earl Strickland has won three of the last four games to take a 4-2 to two lead as he prepares to break. These are the finals of the Brunswick World Open Nine Ball Championship. It's been going on for a long time. It's a long road to this point. Yeah. And that's a pretty good break. Come on, boy. Yeah. Earl again. Simple run out. Three balls on the break. Absolutely no problem. He's total control. Get on the five, shoot to six on the side, eight in the corner. Came over. Five, two. And he's just playing very consistent pool. Through the ball. He's got, he's got to come off the side rail. No problem. 
Mike looks worried. As well he should. This for 5-2. And Earl Strickland will still be at the table. There it is. <laughs> really playing with a lot of confidence. This match is worth $8,000. That's a big difference. Let's take a look at the break to start this whole thing as you watch the nine ball drop. Here it is. He's hitting him hard. Three balls went in Three, here. Nine almost went in. Look at the one coming down, almost getting blocked out by the eight. If the one stopped a foot shorter, Earl wouldn't have had to run out. So you have to have it rolling for you. Right now, Earl has it rolling. He really does. He managed to spread the balls all over the table. He's found his break spot on the table, and he's hitting. He's wailing away. So there he is again. There goes the nine. Yeah. Oh, it, it was going. Got the crowd it fired up here. It was going. It was going. going, going. I'm going to watch the nine ball here. That nine going right towards that pocket. Looks like it was in. Bing. Seven hits it, stays out. Safety. He's going to play safe. He's either going to play safe. Knock the one ball over here. Make the cue ball come two cushions from right back here. Knocked it right on oh. the lines you drew. Well, he didn't hold the one closer to that rail. Gave him a little window there. Well, I'm just trying to put him behind the five and I can't do it. The score is five to two. He's eight feet away from the one. On the rail, tough shot. But if I had anybody shooting this shot this is the guy who would want i would want to shoot consistent shot maker consistent game it's been sitting for a little while great shot great shot great roll Mike better get out here. Draw back for the four. No problem right here, Barry. Four to the five, the orange ball. Five to the six on the side. Pull over for the seven. Follow it up, play the eight in the corner and the nine in the same pocket, the seven went in. Just taking a look at the seven and the nine. Gotta pull it over, pull the cue ball over. It's going down to the bottom rail and coming back up. There's the seven and nine. And there's the shot, six drops, two rails. Perfect. Oh, he can do one of two things. He can draw back. Or you can hit it high. Brings it back for the eight. The textbook stuff here from both players. There's the eight. And now the nine. And this will make it five games to three. First I, to nine I wins the championship. Really wouldn't expect anything else from these two guys. Really well played match. So Mike Siegel right back in it. He'll be at the table. Earl Strickland will be watching him. It's five games to three. Here's the one that did it. We'll be back to Caesars after this. Five games to three. I'm Barry Tompkins with Steve Mizrak. We're at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas. Sponge. Is he a surgeon? <laughs> Earl's going to get a little water. Getting thirsty. I don't blame him. Here's the My break. mouth could get, get a little dry for 15000 that nine ball come close to right it. on the lip. Yeah. But nothing went. Mike See you not, later. Mike is not no, having I mean, any he rolls. Hits him like that, makes two balls. I mean, what is it? You know what I mean? This, is, this game is uh, going to be over quick right here. Looks like it. He's got the one right here. He's got to pull it back right about here for the two. Well, he's very careful. He didn't want to draw the cue ball on the side. Nine ball, right here, combination. No problem. Very easy. There it is. <laughs> easy game for Earl Strickland. Six games to three. He'll take all of those he can get. Here's, here's another look at the combination on the nine ball. 
to win game number nine. Three into the six, into the nine. Three ball combination. Let's Great take another shot. look at his break. This is Siegel's break to start. Now watch the nine ball. Left of your screen. He didn't make any ball on the break. If he did, Mike would have won the match, won, won the game. Not the match. The match is far from being over. Six games to three. Strickland, though, in the catbird seat. There it goes. Made it on the break. nine. That's two quick games. I would think those are the kinds of things that if you're Mike Siegel, you've got to be gnashing your teeth at this point. Well, it upsets you. There goes the nine. Most of the nine is always going towards the left-hand corner pocket. 7-3. Couple of cheapies, and he'll take them all. Jay Holford, our referee, is making sure all those balls are tight. You heard Earl Strickland kind of say under his breath, two more racks, two more racks, trying to get himself pumped up. He is an emotional player. But his emotions I mean, in this case, there, in fact, know, for this whole tournament, like helped him three or four racks. rather than hurt him. And Siegel continues to schmooze with the crowd here. He wanted to make a ball real bad that game. That's an old pool term, isn't it? Schmooze. <laughs> Come on, why not? Look where Earl's cue ball is. Absolutely, positively perfect. Right in the middle of the table. He's got a good opening right here. He's got the two ball right along the side rail. But he's got a little problem. A little problem with the three. He's got a little problem with the three and the eight. So what he's going to try to do is make this ball come over here, try to open these balls up, or get behind them right here. So first things first, and there's the first thing. Now here's the next. Perfect shot. Once in a while I'm right. Uh, Most of the time. <laughs> He could have got a little better break on the three. Although for a player with his style, it should be an easy shot. Four next. Oh, oh the ball twisted. Good. You know what happened there, Barry? Once in a while. What did that ball do? Once in a while, the ball twists. I knew it was going to skid, too. And, and the ball will come up short, which means it, it doesn't cut. And it's an unexplainable factor that does happen once in a while. Didn't seem to upset Earl Strickland too much. Yeah. Could play a large factor in this match. Would have been 8-3. That's right. At 7-3 now, Mike Siegel's going to have to get get. It's going to be 7-4 now. If Mike wins this match, if he wins, the turning point of the match is that twist right there. And it... And wasn't a bad hit by Earl. Wasn't a bad shot by Earl. It's just an unexplainable fate that does happen in this game where the, the ball grabs and goes the other way. Happened at a very bad time for that man. Oh, is that a miracle? You hear him say that's a miracle, yeah. and, and it does happen, but uh, not too often. It just happened to have, happen to Earl right there. Oh, my oh, God. Oh, look what he did here. Look what he did here. Unbelievable. Well, that's not too good. Oh, bad. Now, what, is it, for fun, what does he do with that, Steve? Well, he's got to bank it. That was... That was he's got to bank the nine over in this pocket right here. I'm but Rockefeller. If he misses me. it, he's got to make sure he doesn't miss it off this rail. He's got to shoot this ball off the side rail right up here. So here's the he shot. He can't go low on this. If he goes anywhere, he better go high. Made it. That's a great shot. Nice comeback shot by Mike Siegel. So it is seven games to four as Mike Siegel gets himself right back into it. He'll still be there when we come back. Here's another look at the shot that you say could be the turning point of the match, Steve. Right. What happens here is he... He didn't cut it enough, but the ball twisted on him, which means the ball went the other way. He wanted to cut it more, but Brutal. the ball grabbed. And it's just an unexplainable There's no phenomenon. explaining it. No, no. it doesn't? No. 
Oh, that was really a crucial miss. And as you said, he didn't mishit it. No. Nevertheless, Mike Siegel made a tough what? shot. What? Oh, it's all right. No. Didn't, didn't go. Nah. They're Son yelling for guy. Mike. You know what I mean? That nine ball keeps going clo close to the pocket all the time. He's got an escort oh. here, and the four ball kept it out. Look what I see here. Let me, let me, let me explain something. What could happen here? He could very simply make, make the nine go in his pocket. If he hits it off the rail here into the four, the nine's going to go all across the table into the corner pocket. Now let's see if he can do it. Fascinating shot here if he makes it. Oh, that's impossible. Oh, he hit it bad. He hit it bad. Look at this. That's imp I can't, how could that ball not go in off the four? Well, huh? That's exactly what you were saying, that it could. Now let's take a look at it. We'll have a close look, Steve. Okay, he... He went behind the four. Look where he hit it too too deep. He went behind the four and caught the four off the rail. Jeez, that's unbelievable. I thought for sure the nine was gonna go in. So did he. Tough shot for Earl. Full length of the table. <laughs> God, what are you talking about some crucial shots? That was crucial. Mike has no oh, shot. was that ever crucial? Mike is going to wind up playing safe. He looks like he's going to shoot the two down past this ball and put the cue ball right here. Another phenomenon about this sport, Steve, that's fascinating to me is it's the only sport I can think of where the competitors actually talk it over with the crowd. Yeah. Relaxes you. Yeah, I'm sure it does. Lee Trevino is the same way in golf. Yeah, he is. Chi Chi. A couple of the other guys sure. I know. Earl has no way to hit this ball. He's got to go three rails. And hope, hope and cross it right this way, back down. Hopefully he's going to hit this ball. He got it. Great shot. He went off my lines about that. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Safety coming up. Here's the tactical side of Mike Siegel right here. Yeah, it's a great shot. He's got to keep playing and keep playing these saves until Earl makes some kind of mistake. So Earl, what he's going to try to do this time is to go down to the bottom rail right here and come back up and hit this ball. Got it he again. Did. Almost knocked Good it shot. in the hole. Oh! Earl got away with a shot again. Earl's running lucky. Here's what happened this time. Tough guy to follow, huh? He came close to the five, but... <laughs> Even if he can make the two in this side pocket, he can't get positioned down for the three, which is right here. Very tough to do. And he's thinking. He doesn't know what to do. Safety coming up here, I'll bet. Hmm. He's got 10 seconds left. He better pull the trigger pretty soon. Yeah, all right. He got away with this nice shot. He got away with it, but Earl's got, an, trying to do that. Earl's got an easy hit here. He can go off the side rail back here, hit this two, and he could very possibly snooker Mike for the, for the next shot with the cue ball remaining down in this area, put in a two oh, ball back up. Earl, the master of the jump shot, can't jump this far. <laughs> That's a long jump. Watch the two. Two might stay up. Oh, hit the seven. Perfect shot. Perfect shot. Here's another look at it. Tough man to follow. He just skimmed the two. Kept the two on this side of the table and put the cue ball up top. 
Siegel said he's a tough man to follow. Yeah, it is. This game's being played like a championship game. Yeah, it's getting late. It's getting late, he said. He try to cut it in. When he says that, I know what he's doing. Right behind the seven. He's going to cut it right in. Close. Mike is missing. When he's on, he makes those on. shots. Two in the upper corner this time. Pull back off this rail. Four to three in this pocket right here. So now Strickland can take care of some business on his own. Well, the four and six are tied up. No pocket for the four. It looks like he can make the four in the pocket by the seven. Good shot. Got to pick this clean. Better watch out here. If he hits that six, it's a foul. If he hits it first. Shot. Good shot. Three rails on the cue ball. Cut the five right in this pocket. Cue ball here, here. Back out here. Make the six on the side. Oop, oop. Bad shot. Yeah, dog it. I don't, oh, please. I don't know if he's got room to make that ball. Looks like he does. Take a second to think. Oh, yeah, this. he's got plenty of room. I'm scared the ball's skidding, so I went into the eight. That handheld on the floor is doing a wonderful job. He's a great cameraman down there. Want to take a bow, Jeff Zachary? Great <laughs> shot. How about that? Take a bow there, Earl Strickland. 8 4 Strickland. Strickland's playing great. Siegel's not giving him anything. He's taking it. Let's not forget about the other cameraman, too, I'll tell you. But they're on tripads. Uh, the other guy's uh, got one on his shoulder. This guy's been out here for 10 weeks. <laughs> <laughs> so eight games now to four, and Strickland on the hill. We'll be back to Caesars Palace in Las Vegas after this. Kula. He's not too happy. He's not smiling now. He's here with a check in his pocket, though, to give to the winner. But Mike's not ahead. Mike works for him. Eight to four. Mike, <laughs> say a few prayers. Well, here's a real key shot right here. Hope the nine doesn't go. There it oh, goes. Out. There it is. On the it's over. He scratched. He scratched. He scratched. He scratched. How do you like it? Watching the nine ball go in the hole, so was everybody in oh this arena. God. It went in the hole, but so did the cue ball. They saw the nine go in the hole, and everybody, everybody got up. What a break. What a break. Look at that. Look That's at what this. everybody saw, including me. Unbelievable. You caught the cue ball yes, going Yes, I in. did. I knew I was going to ask. I know everything that's going to happen. Are you going to win? <laughs> <laughs> he's talking negative now. <laughs> but he's so far ahead. Mike has a tough run out here. There is no tomorrow. Taking a long look at this. That's the ball he has to hit. Two ball. A little reverse English here. Great shot. Great shot. He's got to stretch. He's got to shoot over a ball. And he's got to get position for the four. 
Make sure he comes out far enough off the rail so he avoids the six. Good shot. He's got it going right now. It's a long way back, though. Trails by four games. He hasn't won this one yet. You know, again, you can't emphasize enough that you can make eight balls here, and the only one that really matters is that striped one to the left of your screen. Should put it away now. No problem. So it's 8-5. Strickland can only nod his head. Sit there. No Disbelief control. Dramatically. Disbelief. He, he's, he's not believing what happened before. Guess where I'm breaking from. So Mike Siegel will break again, chatting it up with the crowd That's around him. That's where I'm going to break from. Take a guess. He's smiling, but secretly, underneath. I think he's smiling through clenched teeth. It's hurting him a little bit. He wants to be the best player. And in his mind, he is the best player. And there's... In a lot of people's minds, I was mind, just going to say, he has player. a lot of support to that. What? Yes. So the nine ball drops, and the cue ball doesn't for Mike Siegel. One, 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 <laughs> one, two. What a, Miz, what a four in a row go in, huh? Whoa. Huh? Is We're it really there? shoot out what? here. There's another nine look at right. Ugh. Four almost kicked it out. Four was very kind. Here's another look from up top. Split them wide open, clear out the alley. Nine one. That was one. Mike well, wants, eight, six. He went to make four in a row. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> he yelled up to me, is it possible? Huh? Again, he's I'm rallying on. the crowd. Earl's just Three quiet. More. Earl wants to win real bad. I'm trying to keep his concentration. The longer he sits, the harder that is to do. Here's Mike Siegel again. Eight, six. First to nine wins the championship. Eight thousand dollars difference. First to no. second. Count here. Seven rock. It's all right. It's okay. Mike's pumped up now. <clears throat> well, he's got the one into this pocket right here. What's he going to do with the two? Got to look to play a combination. Whew. I don't know what he's going to do. Better be concerned with making the one. He's going to play what we call cinch pool, make sure he makes every shot. Got that one in. Cinch. Safety. Coming right here. That, incidentally, is what he meant by cinch. He's going to. Clip to two. Maybe put the cue ball down over by behind these balls right here. I'd be surprised if he goes with his bank. Yes, he, yeah. he tried it. That's something. He tried it. That's un... Don't line up. Oh. Look at this ball. What is oh. that doing? Uh, well, well, now what? Bad I, I don't know what ball. he was thinking about gun. there. Huh? Look at how bad I hit that. Man, oh, man. <laughs> there again, you talk about your bad shots, you don't talk about the good shots. Why don't you come back and talk about dropping a nine ball? <laughs> well, we've got a combination and a run out. He's got to play position on the two. If he gets position on the two, I think he's going to win. There's the eight ball. Remember, uh, he only needs this game. Well, the length of the table. 
sitting in the chair a long time. But this is his strong point, making these type of shots. He's going to walk the nerves off here. He's got the whole length of the table, the whole length of the table to make this ball in his pocket, come off the rail, right about here, and make the three necks. He feels tough it. Shot. He feels a tough shot. Oh, fire. That's a big fire. shot. Fire. That's a big shot. Now he can relax. No, he can't relax until the nine goes in. Yeah, no, no, that's true. But that was a real pressure shot oh. for him. And he definitely pressure. had a little bit of case of nerves. See what he did after he made that? He clenched fist. He better oh. get out of here. Oh. Stop right there. Don't give Mike Siegel another on, chance. Darling. Mike's looking like he's resigned to the fact that he's going to finish second. Four in there. the pocket. Draw a little back for the five. Well, he's off my line a little. Not too bad. Don't get straight. That's one important thing he doesn't want to do. I've been doing oh, it all my oh. life, and I did it again. He doesn't want to, he didn't want to do that. He, he's straight in. He has no angle to come off the rail. He's going to have to really rifle his ball in. Unless a big shot. Uh-oh. What'd I tell you? Look at the break he got. Really <laughs> tried, to, tried to play it the way you said. I keep doing it. I get straight in every time. Oh. He can't get anywhere else but straight in. It's oh just amazing. My. He got away with one, though. Mike has got to make some shot here. Psychological edge now goes to Mike Siegel. No. <laughs> I am glad I am up here. I'm fainting on every shot up here. Earl Strickland's got to sit and think about that one. Well, he's going to try to cut this in, I hope. did. Now what? Oh! Now what? Ah, uh, there we go. Now what? That's what I wanted. This isn't a hanger. Uh, cut this one if I miss it, right? <laughs> this one goes in the upper corner. He's gonna, tr he's gonna try to make it all the way down here, slice his ball. I think he'll make it, Barry. This for eight seven. He makes this, he'll bring the house down. If he misses it, he might lose the match. He will lose the match. No good. Oh, Didn't get it, and now. now over. Looks like Earl's a winner. I can handle this one. <laughs> you can handle it. <laughs> he did. Earl Strickland. He's the champion. Great match. Great final match. Number one and number two and the hot player this year has won it. Earl Strickland beats Mike Siegel. He was very confident, very confident there. That was a great win for him. He is pumped up now. That's the first time he's smiled, I think, in about a week. <laughs> Earl Strickland, nine games to six over Mike Siegel. Wasn't easy, but it was pretty. Look at he fist. wins it. We'll come back to talk with the winner after this. Well, two shots in this match stand out from all the others in a room full of great shots and a match full of great shots. This one by Mike Siegel. Miss, good as a mile in this case. And that brought Earl Strickland leaping out of his chair for this shot. This one he said, I could handle. He did. Earl Strickland is the champion, $15,000 richer. And to make the presentation, there's a happy man, Jim Bakula, director of operations for Billiards for Brunswick. Jim? Thank you very much, Barry. Uh, this has been an, an exciting tournament, and Brunswick Billiards was very proud to sponsor it. Now I have the pleasure of presenting the winner's check for $15,000 to the 1988 Brunswick World Open champion, Earl Strickland. Congratulations, Earl, thank on a great you. tournament. Thank you, Jim. Uh, I just want to say I want to thank uh, Brunswick uh, Corporation and Caesars and uh, ESPN. Everything was great here this week. Uh, I had a splendid time. It's a great hotel. Thank you. Earl, you know what struck me? I, I almost wish it could have been in the audience. It's a great match to watch. <laughs> well, I used to be in the audience, but uh, I'm up here playing now. And Mike's a great competitor, and uh, 
it came down to me and him. I was number one, he's number two, and uh, I think that's the way it should have been. Yeah, two great players, and that's got to be that much more gratifying, the fact that you did beat a guy like Mike, Mike Siegel. Well, he's not easy to beat. I think he taught me how to play. <laughs> great victory for you today, though. Steve, you're with Mike. Mike, uh, what happened? Uh, we can't forget about number two. Can you tell us what happened? Uh, well, the, the, I just couldn't get my concentration going. That clock just on a couple key shots, you know, it was in my mind. And when I was shooting that nine ball, I knew I was right at that spot where I was waiting to hear 15 seconds like always. And that's what was going through my mind when I shot the ball. And I really thought I was going to make it. I mean, I was kibitzing there. But. Earl kept you off the table. I think that's what beat you. Yeah. Back to you, Barry. All right, fine. Well, the clock, that was the big story. And unfortunately for Mike Siegel, time was up. Earl Strickland's the champion. Back with the final word right after this. Well, Earl Strickland is the world champion. That's got to be a big thrill. Interesting match, Steve. I think enough emotional highs and lows to put you on the couch. Great match. Uh, I was uh, really amazed the way Earl held up there. And yeah, last match here, last game, he fired that uh, four ball or two ball, whatever it is, 100 miles an hour and, and got perfect position. I mean, he, he just played great. We've been talking for the last 10 weeks about the psychology of this game and how difficult it is when you're just sitting there stewing over a bad shot. And today, I think Earl did that just a little bit better than Mike. Mike was very worried about the shot clock, and I was very surprised. If he just got up and played his game, he would have been better off. Just a slight distraction, and that was enough to throw it off because the concentration factor, of course, probably the biggest thing in the game. Mike will get even somewhere down the road. All right, and again, Earl Strickland said back in 1983 when he beat you, that's what turned his career upward. Today, he's at the top of the heap. He's the world champion. For Steve Mizrak, I'm Barry Tompkins saying so long from Caesars Palace in Las Vegas, Nevada. The World Nine Ball Championships were brought to you by Brunswick.